Up till now, any kind of movement we've done in our applications has been through timelines and animation. This time, we're going to explore how to modify the elements on your artboard in code. So let me create a new project, and I'm going to call this Element Control. Now when you modify the location of elements, you can do it with any kind of layout container that you happen to be working with. But I find it's a lot easier if you're working in a canvas. So I'm going to right click my grid, tell it to change the layout type, and switch it over to a canvas. Now I can go ahead and work and you'll find this to be quite a bit easier on the code side. Now I'm going to create a small little marker that represents perhaps my player in a game that I'm working on. I'm going to rename that rectangle Player, and now I want to create some buttons for the user to be able to modify the player. To make that a little easier, I'm going to grab a dock panel and drop it down in the bottom right corner. Let me activate that and create a button, and I'm going to change the dock property on that button to dock it on top. Let's add another button, and this will dock on the bottom, another on the left, and the last one on the right. Now let's hook up those four buttons to actually move my player. Let's start by selecting my first button, going to my event handler, and add a click handler. Visual Studio comes up, and I'm ready to start writing my code. Now the first thing I need to do before I can move my element is figure out where it is already. So the first thing I need to do is do this dot player, and I need to get the dependency property for the top of the player. Now the dependency property top doesn't actually exist on my rectangle, it exists on the canvas. For instance, a grid or a stack panel doesn't have a concept of a top, but a canvas does, so it doesn't make sense for the top property to exist on the rectangle. So here, when I'm specifying my dependency property, I say canvas dot top property instead of rectangle dot top property. Now I need to get this value, so I'm going to store it as current top, and I just need to tell the .NET framework that the value that's going to be returned is a double. Let me build and make sure I've got this correct. And in fact I do. So let's carry on. If I look at that double, I want to move my object upward on the screen. Now if I move it off the top of the screen, my rectangle is going to move too far, so I want to make sure I've got enough room to move. Now I'm being arbitrary and I want to move it by 5 pixels every time I change. So what I want to do here is if my current top is greater than 5, then current top is my current current top minus 5. So let's take a look at this. As long as I'm more than 5 pixels from the top of the screen, I'm going to change my top to be 5 less than it currently is. So if I were, say, 20 pixels from the top, after I run through this code, current top would now be set to 15. Now I just need to push this value back in, so I just do a this.player.set value, specify my dependency property, and say what I want to set it to. Let me hit Control shift b to build. Everything's building correctly, so I can switch back over to Blend and press F5. When I push the Up button, now my rectangle moves up with each click. Now once I get up to the top of the screen, however, once I no longer have got the 5 pixel room to move, my rectangle stops because that piece of code that's preventing me from going any higher kicks in. Now if I wanted to, I could go ahead and hook up each one of the four buttons 
to continue to move my rectangle upward, left, down, or right. The only other piece that's worth noting is when I'm moving to the right or downward, the only properties I can get off the rectangle are the left and top. So calculating these is just a little bit more complicated, but not much. Let's go ahead and implement that one right now. I'm going to select the second button, and I'm going to add a click handler to it to move down. Now this time, I'm going to get the current position the same way. So set my current bottom to this player get value of the canvas top property and cast that as a double so that it knows what type of object it's going to receive. Now my current bottom right now is actually the current top. So I'm going to set the current bottom to the current bottom plus the player's desired size's height. So now I've moved that value down to include the height of the player, so my current bottom is actually the bottom of my rectangle. So now let's find out if I've got enough room. So I need to add 20 to my bottom and compare that to the actual height of my layout root to see if I've got enough room. If I do, let's go ahead and move it. Now, if I were to just use set value to set the top property on the canvas to my current bottom, I'd end up moving my player down 20 pixels plus the entire height of my player. So when I do the set value, I need to subtract the height back out. So this time, I'm doing set value, the top property of my canvas, and just doing my current bottom minus the desired height of my player. Let me save this, switch back over to Blend, and press F5. Now, when I hit the Down button, my rectangle moves by 20 pixels at a time. And when I move down to the bottom edge, when I no longer have enough room to move, my rectangle stops moving. If you want to go ahead and finish this exercise, adding the event handler to move left should be very similar to moving to the top, and adding the event handler to move to the right would be very similar to the event handler for moving downward. And that ends moving controls in code. So let me close this project, and we're done.